Well, here, Lord Clark has been giving evidence to the inquiry into the contaminated blood scandal. Around 3,000 people died after being given blood products containing HIV and hepatitis C in the 1970s and 80s. Lord Clark is the first former senior health minister from the time to testify. Our health correspondent Jim Reid is following the inquiry. This inquiry in the building behind me has been examining events that happened 40 or 50 years ago but are still having an effect today. One group particularly affected are around 4,500 people with the blood disorder haemophilia. Some were young children at the time and they were infected with viral hepatitis and HIV in many cases after being given these contaminated blood products. Now Ken Clark, now Lord Clark, uh, was the chief... NHS person in charge of that health policy around that time at the beginning of the 1980s when the first reports of a crisis around AIDS emerged. Giving evidence this morning, he said when he joined that department back in 1982, it was not clear and he never expected a problem like this to arise. The whole setup, the structure, was a, a completely shambolic bureaucracy, which is why blood products, which was a comparatively calm area, uh, uh, until it had this horrendous problem that took us all by surprise when a new disease and new infection started emerging. Was, it was a quiet little part uh, uh, of all this. It was, uh, it, it, it was it's very big because of the tragedy now, big this inquiry. So Lord uh, Clark is going to be giving further evidence here, detailed evidence, for the next three days at this inquiry. It's important, very much so, for the families, the relatives of people who've lost their lives and the survivors, not just because of the detail of which he's providing, but also because of the principle here. This is the first time such a senior minister has been giving oath, uh, evidence under oath at an inquiry like this. That's Jim Reid reporting. And let's talk about... Uh the inquiry and also Lord Clark's evidence with Clive Smith, who's chair of the Haemophilia Society. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. And um, as we were saying in the introduction, this is the for first testimony from a, a, a former senior health minister. Um, what did you make of Lord Clark's evidence? How important was it to hear from him? It's incredibly important. We've had two previous inquiries. One was an independent inquiry, another one in Scotland. And this is the first time we've really had an inquiry with teeth that's been able to call senior politicians to account. Sadly, lots of senior politicians are no longer with us. The Prime Minister of the day, Margaret Thatcher, for example. So we only have selected people left. And as you rightly identified, Lord Clark is one of those. It's been incredibly important to hear from him today because people want answers. They want to know, with 3,000 people dead, why those people died, because compensation won't assuage any, uh, any of the problems they've had over the years. They need answers from senior politicians and today sees the first step in that journey, which has taken nearly 40 years to get to. So you want answers. I mean, did we get any answers from Lord Clark? Um, I, I think that the mood I'm here at the inquiry at the moment, the, the mood here is that um, Lord Clark has been very um, evasive. He, he is not answering questions directly. He is uh, trying to put responsibility onto others. He, this afternoon, only this afternoon, was trying to put responsibility onto patients, people with haemophilia, to know that blood imports from the US were contaminated with HIV. We talked about a Council of Europe document, and he was suggesting that patients must have been very switched off um, would they, if they were not to know that these sorts of products might have been contaminated. He's effectively suggesting that patients should have educated themselves through the Sunday Mail, for example. I think you've tweeted, actually, from the inquiry, the contempt Kenneth Clark is displaying towards the inquiry is jaw-dropping. You're clearly not happy. No, I and many others are, are not happy. Um, this morning, before lunch, he asked councils of the inquiry, Queen's Council, whether or not the questions she was asking were relevant. Um, the chair of the inquiry, Sir Brian Langstaff, is a retired High Court judge, so he knows a little bit about the law and a little bit about relevance. And he had to interpose and interject at that point and say to uh, Lord Clark, that he will be the judge and arbiter of whether or not the question is relevant and he should continue to ask, answer the questions until and unless he interrupts. So, yes, his evidence has been quite jaw-dropping. It's not just what he's saying, it's the way he's saying it, the disdain and the contempt that he's hold, holding the community in today. Decades later, he's had an opportunity to apologise, to say sorry, to explain what went wrong, and he's doing no more than trying to protect his reputation. How do you assess this inquiry and the progress it's making? I mean, A, how important do you think it is? And B, is it going to come up with um, 
answers as to how to stop this thing ever happening again. Is it going to provide comfort to the victims and their relatives? It's making good progress. It's obviously been impeded by the pandemic, but um, the inquiry has continued online. Um, we are at phase two of the inquiry. So the first phase was personal testimony from those who've been infected and affected. We're now at phase two, which is the investigative phase, and we are starting to see from people at the top who were involved in making these sorts of decisions. We also know that Lord Fowler now will be called to give evidence at the end of September this year. Um, so we're really getting to meet of the inquiry. In terms of whether or not it will deliver answers, everybody's very optimistic. We think in the chair, Sir Brian Langstaff, we have an excellent chair and an excellent team behind him as well, who are doing their best to try and uncover what happened, albeit 40 years ago. Um, it's very difficult, of course, to piece all the pieces of the jigsaw together, but we are getting a good picture of what went on and what happened. But what we really need now from government is we need them to tell the truth. It's not good enough that they just come, come along unprepared, as Lord Clark clearly appears to be. Um, he's had to be referred to documents again today and taken time to read through them, documents that he was provided well in advance of the inquiry. And he seems to have been taken by complete surprise by them today. So it's only if we have the truth from government and the politicians are at the top that the inquiry will actually be able to make these recommendations and, as you say, to ensure nothing like this can ever happen again. Good to talk to you, Clive. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, that's Clive Smith, who is chair of the Haemophilia uh, Society, who uh, joins us there from the inquiry. Many thanks. Yeah.